Okay, this is the Viper Forty Five Sixty Seven here with the WWF Attitude Era Episode Ten. This is a uh, WWF One at Night Only. This was in the NEC Arena in Birmingham, England, and a approximate crowd of over eleven thousand. So, so this was um, the first UK only pay per view, and the second pay per view after SummerSlam ninety two. So. To be honest, I was looking for, really looking forward to doing this pay review. And actually, how I knew about this actually, ironically, I played W, the video game WWE 13. That's how I knew about it straight away because I took a break from wrestling. I think I took a break from was it was late 2011 to about the end of 2013 because I took a real break. I really never watched WWF one night only. When I saw it, like I said, I'll have a look at the pay review and review, watch other people's reviews of the show. Obviously, the English crit, obviously, Mark Pierce and stuff like that. Um, and he, so I said to myself, here, I'll give it a go. And honestly, when I was going to do the Attitude Era, anyway, I'd have to review this show. So, And I have to say, it's one of, probably one of the greatest shows I've ever watched, probably. It's probably one of the best WWF shows ever. It's probably better than Canadian Stampede. But, uh, I've rated it better than Canadian Stampede. Yeah, there is more. There was only four matches with Canadian Stampede, but yet, there was better matches on this card than there was at. Canadian Stamp. I know there was a five star match, but still, you think about it, there's three four star matches over here and two two over three star matches as well. So we'll get on to this now straight away. Um, Hunter Hearst Helmsley defeating Dude Love in a very good opening match. Uh, Dude does a promo before the match saying he's going to get groovy with China after the match, basically doing it in an English accent, copy and base, imitating uh, Austin Powers, which was basically very funny, I must say. Really good. Kind of segment. Uh, the crowd, the crowd are red hot for dude love. Also, King was excellent on commentary all night. Everything about everything basically British. He was taught English, taught about basically calling you on slags. Bloody hell, he goes. And I, I say bloody hell myself because I'm actually from London, even though I have an Irish accent, but I was born in London. So, and basically calling people pillocks, which was so funny. Um, I don't actually personally say, say pillock. I don't think I've ever said Pillock in my life, especially for a fellow who lived in England, was born in England, lived there for 10 years. Um, obviously, I've lived in Ireland now for so long, now I've lost my English accent, so. Pity. Um, we'll start off the match with a nice elbow and a back body drop from Dude Love. Close line then from the Dude, which he controls most of the match. Uh, dude then will drop toe hold on Triple H, then he does. He puts Triple H in a tree of woe and does 10 punches on his knees and then a dive and headbutt. The dude then goes for sweet shin music on Triple H, but Triple H gets out of the way, and then they both go, they go on the outside, and dude chases Triple H around the ring until he gets a nice little eat to clothesline from one another, China. Face bust then from Triple H gets two. Triple H then pushes the ref, and basically the ref pushes him back, and basically the crowd go fucking insane for it, which is brilliant. Uh, Bulldog then from, uh, the dude, from Dude Love gets two. Spinning neck breaker then from Triple H. Pedigree is reversed into a slingshot into the turnbuckle. Arm drag from the top rope then from Dude Love. Uh, dude then with a double arm DDT. Uh, uh, pins Triple H and then trying to put his foot on the rope. And how the match is won is basically Triple H Pedigree's uh, Dude Love for the win. So overall a fantastic, <coughs> excuse me, a, fa a very good opening match. Really, really enjoyed the crowd or shit offer. I give a three and one quarter. Three and one quarter star, so happy days. Next match, then we have T Tiger Ali Singh defeating Le Leaf Cassidy in a <sighs> crap match, really. Um, Tiger looked absolutely terrible in this match. Leaf Cassidy didn't do too bad, now I must say. He didn't look, just he knew Tiger it was his first match, basically. I know yeah, you're not going to be world class, but like it kind of. Um, Kind of showed really he was very green and all that, so that the crowd weren't interested. Te technically, Tiger Ali Singh was supposed to be babyface in this, but obviously, he's um, a Canadian, he's basically a Canadian Ar Irani, which who gives a shit. Basically, he's proud to be from Canada, who cares? Uh, Parts of the match was a nice clothesline and then a bulldog from the top, from the top rope onto Leaf Cassidy, which got the win for Tiger Ali Singh. I'll give it half a star because that move and one or two other little things worked, so. Next then, the Headbangers defeat Los Bariquas in a very good tag team match to retain the WWF tag belts. I'll tell you one thing, a really decent match, especially from the Headbangers. Uh, this match basically on paper probably would have got maybe a star. You think, yeah, it's going to be another god-awful match, but it was really surprising. 
It starts off with Savio and Miguel attacking Mosh and Trasher, and then when the bell rings, Mosh and Miguel start off. Mosh then with two arm drags, uh, flying clothesline from Trasher, then a couple of arm drags from both Savio and Trasher. Uh, Savio kicks Trasher in the back, and then Miguel and Savio work on Trasher, which basically they work on Trasher for a good ten, a good eight to nine minutes, maybe even ten minutes. Nice spinning hill kick then from Savio. Miguel then and Salvio double team Trasher while the ref has been distracted by Mosh, which he gets distracted a lot in this match, which is brilliant, good tactics from both from Los Barricos. Uh, crossbody from Trasher gets two, and then Salvio comes back with a spinning heel kick. Standing Moontag uh, gets two for Perez. Mosh gets the tag, but obviously the referee didn't see it, so it doesn't count. Salvio then goes for a slash, but Trasher gets the knees up. Back body drop down from Trasher, and finally gets the hot tag. The crowd go crazy. Mosh comes in, clean sails. Close line Salvio over the top rope. Hornick and Ronald then from the top rope on Perez gets two. Power slam them from Mosh gets two. Power bomb from Perez on I think it was a Trasher and Mosh gets the whoopee cushion for the win. So happy days. Not a very good match I must say. I'd give it three stars. A really, really surprising match I must say. I think a lot of people would have been surprised that maybe the headbanger's greatest ever match probably in WWE or F whatever. Um, then we had an interview with the British Bulldog saying his family are going to be there and he was talking about his uh, sister Tracy who b battled cancer, basically fighted cancer twice, once when she, I think she was only a year old and uh, she survived that and then the, the next term, which was only recently at that time and she survived, which I'll tell you what, it was nice to hear, we could see a person battling cancer, especially twice, like basically saying look I'm a survivor, I've kicked its ass and basically they're saying she was going to be in the crowd. I think she actually comes out to the ringside. Basically comes out the, to the ring with him. So. No, it's good to hear. It's a nice little story to hear someone surviving cancer. Especially from a ver especially the first time from a very young age. So, Kind of all credit to her. So, Anyway, next match then is the Patriot defeating Flash Funk in a... Another very bad match. Another bad This is a better match than the Leaf Casting one, but not by much. But wouldn't think that... Um, the Patriot was only three weeks prior to this was actually fighting Bret Hart for the WWF title. Now he's facing Flash Funk. No disrespect to Flash Funk or anything, but it's uh, it's just a bit weird, really, to be honest. It's kind of it's kind of, kind of like what WWE do today. Someone gets a title shot and then they basically go back to mid card status. So match starts off with a handshake from both wrestlers, which is the two faces basically, but Patriot looks very confused why the fans don't like him, he's basically going around waving the USA flag, yeah, England do not like America, simple as that, none of us, no, Britain do not like America, well, they don't, basically, <laughs> nice drop kick from Funk, uh, uh, arm drags down from Flash Funk as well, diving headbutt then from the Patriot which gets two, flying crossbody gets two then for Funk, nice belly to, be belly, back, uh, belly to back suplex from Patriot, and then the Uncle Slam gets the win for the Patriot. And which gets the win, and you can see basically Patriot did not expect to be booed, and really he just couldn't retake really it basically. So, if I'm being honest there, so the match was poor. I'd give it a star at best. Next time we have the Legion of Doom defeating the Goblins in another awful match. Uh, the crowd were really into LOD though, which was kind of weird. Uh, weird, really kind of couldn't really give. Well, not weird, but it's just the fact is, every time I've watched the Legion of Doom match, yeah, they get a little bit of ovation. They really got ovation in this one. Um, not much really happened there. Nice shoulder block from Manuel. Then uh, Hawk gets the shoulder, goes the shoulder first into the ring post. The Goblins work on both Manuel and Hawk's arm, which typical LOD fashion, they do not sell for shit. Sure, why would they? Manuel gets the hot tag. Hawk cleans house. Henry then gets the slob drop on Hawk. That gets two. Hawk tags Animal. He cleans house. Nice power slam from Animal and the double clothesline. The win comes thanks to the Doomsday Device on Hen on Felix Godwin, and that's basically it. So I'll give it a star just for being nice. Then in the ring, then Jim Ross uh, interviews Ken Shamrock. He was supposed to wrestle Owen Hart in this um, at this event, but due to the fact that he was coughing up blood after a match with Farouk that I think a week before that on Raw uh, in the Intercontinental Title Tournament, um, which obviously he could not. I think he said he had a punctured lung and a few, yeah, punctured lung and a few bad ribs. Uh, then Rockabilly comes out and takes the piss out of Shamrock, saying basically you're supposed to be the world's strongest, uh, dangerous man. And basically then Shamrock snaps and just suplexes him and gives him, puts in the ankle lock and basically Rockabilly taps out like a little girl. So yeah, brilliant. So 
Now, on to the next match then. Vader defeats Owen Hart in a very, very good match, I must say. This match now was not expecting to go to get four stars. I know basically it's the old adage power versus uh, power versus speed, but still, like it was really, really good. I, I was expecting it maybe two and a half star match basically, but basically got me up basically. From, I thought from a two and a half, it's gone up to a four star. So basically, it's gone up a star and a half. So really good match. Uh, Owen Hart is basically Vader's face, and basically Owen Hart is a heel, but basically the roles reverse basically in this match. Um, Owen Hart got like a sh oh what wow, an absolute great response, but is what um, Jr said basically he's already getting a good response because the fact that he teamed with the British Bull he's teamed with the British Bulldog so so basically Vader's heel uh, this um, Vader controls at the start Owen goes for a sunset si uh, sunset flip pin but can't do it so Vader goes to sit on him but goes ass first in onto the mat and then Vader goes for a power bomb that gets reversed into a Hanukkah and Rana. Owen oh, many times in this match goes to the shark shooter, but obviously Vader gets the ropes. Uh, flying crossbody gets two of her own. V Vader gets then, he catches Owen and gives him a fall away slam. Slash then from the second rope gets two for Vader. Nice slash in the corner then from Vader. Big slash then gets two for Vader. Owen oh, then starts to fight back with an inseguri and gets the sharp shooter up, but he gets to the ropes. Then a nice slam from Owen on Vader. That gets a two count. Owen oh, misses the Vader bomb. By Owen getting the knees up and then a missile drop kick from the top rope and then Owen goes gets a spin and heel kick that also gets a two count. Owen goes to the top rope for a sp let's say he's probably going for a splash or whatever across body but it gets countered into a power slam and that's what gets the win in a very good match and what I said is basically the the old power it's basically power versus speed which it works perfectly in this match so I have no problem with it. a really good match for stars. Next match, Bret Hart defeats The Undertaker to by disqualification, obviously retains the WWF title in a very good match. Match of the night, in my opinion. Just edges out the main event by maybe, by that much. Maybe that's a bit of um, But it gets a good reaction coming out to the ring, but soon as the bell rings, he gets fucking booed. Uh, Taker gets a good reaction. Taker also gets booed in this a little bit. Like, you can hear the odd boo. Like, I'll tell you one thing, I did like the crowd, I must say. They brawl at the start, Taker throws Bret into the corner. Then Brett exposes one of the turnbuckles, obviously. Uh, and then a nice clothesline from Taker gets two. Diving clothesline then from Brett Hart. On the outside, Taker rams Brett back into the ring post. They brawl onto the ramp. Taker slams Brett onto the ramp. Back into the ring. DT then from Brett. Couple of elbows then from Brett and onto the other Taker. Taker then Irish rips Brett chest first into the exposed turnbuckle. And then Taker then works on the chest of Brett Hart. Taker then with a nice backbreaker. Uh, Taker then has Brett in the corner. And goes knee for and basically looking to go knee first into him, but he misses, so he hits the turnbuckle. It's not the exposed one, which I thought it was at the time. Uh, so basically, Brett works on Taker's knee, which obviously is going to allude to the sharp shoe there, basically, which was absolutely brilliant. Uh, Brett gets the ring post figure four, and then a normal one then for a change into the ring, which Taker reverses it. Uh, the crowd go as, as uh, the crowd basically go crazy when Taker reverses it. Suplex to gets two for Brett. Double clothesline to both of them are on the ground. Taker gets up first and gets a leg drop, but two leg drops, and then the sec third one basically Bret Hart reverses it into a sharp shooter, which Taker gets out. Taker then goes for a choke slam, but Bret counts it by kicking the knee. Bret goes then for the ring bell, but he eats a boot of the Taker. Taker then gets it, the ref stops him, and so basically Bret ch chop blocks the, the leg of Taker. Taker pushes uh, Bret then out of the ring onto a cameraman. Taker then rams Bret into the steel steps. Taker goes for old, old school, but Bret Hart arm drags him off the ropes. Bret Hart then goes, gets his head stuck in between the top and second rope, basically. So Taker keeps hitting him and hitting him. So basically, the ref just disqualifies him. So basically, Taker's fuming. He chokeslams the ref. Gerald Briscoe then gets tries to get uh, Bret Hart out, but he gets chokeslammed for his troubles. Owen Hart then gets him out. And basically, the announcer announced Bret Hart is the winner. Uh, Taker chases the ring announcer out of the ring as well, So which was kind of fun. So... Kind of the finish kind of it didn't ruin the match really, but it kind of I think a proper ending would have been better. But still, I'm going to give it four and a half stars. So next, Shawn Michaels defeats the British Bulldog to win the WWF European title in what was another very good match. This is the Shawn Michaels becomes only the second holder of the European title because obviously British Bulldog won it in a tournament in Berlin earlier, I think March of '97 on Raw after defeating uh, Vader, Mankind and obviously his own partner Owen Hart so 
So obviously the European title, like this is like European in the nineteen ninety seven, like kind of towards the early stage of the European title. But so actually, some good matches and some important people holding the title. You think Triple H, uh, Shawn Michaels, Bulldog. Like you think there's some important wrestlers holding the title. So at the early stages of it, of course. Uh, HBK makes his entrance, goes over some some girls. Like he was pretty over in the match as well, hugging them and kissing. This kid then basically is put, shoving this uh, bulldog action figure into his face. It, I think he grabs it, I think or something, or it falls, and he basically gives it back to the show, which is fair play to him. Because I think if I was the if I was HBK, I would have just left it there and leave the security guys uh, get it back. Cause he was poking it, and he basically got him in the eye. So like fair play to Sean. Um, Bulldog comes out with his sister, with sister, which was nice, brought her over to Diane, ha, his, uh, his wife, Diana Hart. Crowd go crazy, I must say. Which, for the whole of the show, really, except for maybe one match. Other than that, they were excellent throughout the whole show. But one of the better crowds of the year. I saw some fantastic signs, like ECW, uh, Doi Bischoff, Doi, uh, WCW sucks, ECW rules, fucking Shawn Michaels sucks dick. <laughs> Oh god, it was unreal. Some some deadly signs, I must say. Um, uh, Bulldog, right, where are we at? Well, Bulldog dominates the start of the match. Arm dragged in from the top row from Bulldog. Bulldog rams HPK's head into the turnbuckle a few times. Nice gorilla press slam from Bulldog. Bulldog then back body drops HPK onto the outside. Nice sit down powerbomb from Bulldog gets a two. Fall away sound also from Bulldog. Uh, Rick Rude comes to ringside and rams Bulldog into the ring post and then rams him into the apron of the ring. Both men hit each other, and then here comes Triple H and China. Nice back body drop from Bulldog. Bulldog and shoulder goes shoulder first into the ring post. HPK goes to the top rope and gets two, two diving elbows. HPK, um, Bulldog goes for a power slam, but Rick Rude grabs his legs. They go onto the outside. Bulldog wants to power slam HPK, but obviously his knees gives way. HPK then switching music, then to Bulldog, and then Triple H grabs him for a pedigree. Bulldog on the. Uh, uh, Triple H then grabs him, puts him back into the ring. Uh, HPK takes off Bulldog's knee brace and throws it in onto the lap of his wife, which is Diana Hart, and gets the figure four in. And with help with Triple H and China, basically grabbing HPK's hands, put more force on. Uh, with the, also Rick Rude punching Bulldog as well. So basically, he passes out, and Shawn Michaels gets the win and re uh, regain, re regain, he doesn't regain, he wins the WWF European title. So after the match, then the crowd are booing. Basically, rubbish is starting to come into the ring. HPK gets on the ramp, onto the mic, and rips into the heart foundation. And the bulldog's wife, Diana, who is also a heart, obviously a heart. Um, HPK gives him yet another figure four leg lock. Basically, Triple H is screaming, "Come on, scream for your country!" Uh, Diana gets into the ring. China grabs her, and Brett and Owen come out to, for the save. So they hightail it out of there, shot. So, so. I give this match four and one quarter star. Overall, this pay per view is fucking solid, except for maybe two, maybe three, yeah, three matches. Like yeah, the two, the two one star match and a half star. Yeah, they were poor matches, but still, you can. This pay per view was, was excellent. It was absolutely excellent. Four what was it one, two, three, like five very good matches. Like like every match is the five great mat good matches were over three stars, except for one match the three star, but the rest were over three stars. Two of them were past the four star mark, so I'm going to give this a 9.5. This is arguably the second best WWE pay per view of all time. Easily. So, so this was the Viper 4567. The next Attitude Air episode will be Bad Blood. Um, I will be reviewing that on Monday, so I will. So, obviously, I hope, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, please subscribe, comment, and let me know what you think. So, we'll talk to you later, guys. So, take care.